Having grown up in Wellington and having spent weeks in Christchurch over the past 20 months, I can tell you my response to earthquakes is to sit very still. Not sure why. One of our great colleagues, Andrew Curry, the man who edited the story, shoots off like a greyhound every time a biggish one hits. He goes, I stay, both of us dealing with it in our own way. Our viewers in Christchurch will all have stories of staying, going, or trying to do both at once. The fear that hits you as you realise this is a big one, trying to cope again. At Canterbury University, they're trying to help people cope, but to do that, they have to replicate the fear an earthquake can create. John Selwood on an earthquake simulator, scaring people for their own good. Lucy and Joe are high school friends who are knowingly walking towards another major earthquake. Thanks. Under the watchful eye of clinical psychologist Eileen Britt, they're about to try out Canterbury University's new quake simulator. OK, Joe and Lucy, in a minute I'm going to step off the platform. What I'd like you to do is to turn around and face the screen. I want you to focus on what you see, what you feel and what you hear. At some stage you might feel some anxiety. Use that 0 to 10 scale that we talked about to signal when you're feeling anxious. If you, for example, feel a 5, then signal. Just keep focusing on what you see, hear and feel and your anxiety will come down. It's a 3D visual experience accompanied by a wall of sound. Oh my God. <laughs> and shaking. Lots and lots of shaking. <laughs> now you may be asking why put anyone through something that is clearly going to scare them. <laughs> well, it's all about helping body and mind cope with the real thing. You experience an earthquake, you're out of control, it comes suddenly and it finishes and you're still in this heightened sense of, that sense of anxiety. So you don't get a chance to sort of what we call habituate and learn to tolerate that anxiety and have your anxiety lower again because it's all over too quickly. This gives an opportunity for the person to experience that. So how was that as an initial kind of test? Well... <laughs> It was pretty scary. Yeah? Was, yeah. Yeah, quite shaky. Yeah. And you felt, it felt ripped to you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like okay. grounded, Definitely. yeah. Yeah. I know this sounds a bit mean, but we're going to take the glasses off you now. And I'm, do you know why? <laughs> why? It makes you want to look at your eyes while you're experiencing it. You can't see your eyes. I'm just interested in what they're going to do now. That was a minor earthquake. They're going to ramp it up and you're going to get something bigger. Can you cut the set, is that right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, yeah. Oh my god. It's called graded exposure. And so the idea here is that we don't put them in the deep end at the most strongest earthquake that we can create in the most fearful situation. But at a level that they can tolerate, that they certainly get a heightened anxiety, and that they learn to sit with that anxiety because as if you're feeling anxious, highly anxious, you can't stay that way. The body just can't sustain it. So given time, the level will come down. Now, the reason Joe and Lucy were asked if they wanted to be part of this story is because neither of them is particularly fearful or anxious about earthquakes. So they're not real clients, but their responses to the simulator are absolutely genuine. So this is probably, I figure, about your Oh, fifth run through. Mm -hmm. Are you a lot less anxious than you were the first time you went in? Yeah. yeah so the anxiety level's coming down? Yeah. Yeah. Exposure therapy has been used internationally for a number of years, but the use of simulators is relatively new. Quite a lot of research that has shown that recreating those experiences in a safe environment with a therapist uh, can be quite beneficial for them to overcome their, uh, overcome their problems. The beauty of the Christchurch Sim is that it's adapting existing game technology, so rather than starting from scratch, they're saving a load of money and time. So there's pretty much a unique object for each object in this, in this scene that's actually relative to the uh, flow graph over here. And um, this is what we use to actually trigger what's happening in the, in the game engine. Obviously visuals alone aren't enough to create a believable earthquake scenario. What you need is movement underfoot. And here again the university's taken an off-the-shelf product and adapted it for their own purposes. We call them bass shakers or audio transducers and they are normally used by uh, home cinema enthusiasts. 
then if you watch Independence Day or whatever with big explosions, you don't just get the explosion through your subwoofer and, and the base, but you get the shaking as well on your couch. Hi there, Lucy and Joe. Oh. How did you find that, Lucy? How, how high did your number go up to? Um, probably about a five. And Joe? Uh, probably like, yeah, five or a six maybe. Okay. Well, normally you'd experience that for longer if you're a client and then your anxiety would come down and we'd stop it. But as part of this, you've had it exposed to it several times now, and each time, how did you find it? Did your anxiety go up the same amount or less? Less each time. And that's the aim. The Quake Sims developers believe once completed, the project could help thousands regain their confidence in the face of Canterbury's ongoing seismic activity. John Selwood reporting the designers of that are looking for funding so they can get rid of the big screens and replace them with virtual reality helmets. Uh, it's a fascinating business and it does seem to be working.